Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Connect In. Connect In is a weekly broadcast uh, about the many amazing reasons why we need to know who's talking, our head or our heart. So what's the difference between head and heart? Our head, our brain, she's beautiful, right? She like holds information. She helps us navigate driving, making coffee, all these kind of things. And our heart via our body helps keep us on compass or what I call our soul's truth. And in a beautiful, perfect way, our heart supports our head and our head supports our heart. But more often than that, our head, our mind, our inner critic, or as I experienced this week, our inner saboteur, um, will sometimes push you off course if it feels like you're on a precipice of change. Okay, so let's start again. Have any of you ever had the experience where you are just on fire about something? You are excited about something, a new job, a new partner, a new life, a new something, you wanna move, whatever that is, right? And then all of a sudden, you're like, all the pieces are in flow, right? In flow always tells you that you are in the groove of your heart. You're in the flow, and then you go, <whistles> and you stop, and you're like, oh my God, I can't do this. What was I thinking? I'm not good enough. Um, really don't have anything to say. Uh, I, I really can't do this job. I am not um, worthy. Okay, there are the really obvious ways that your inner credit kicks in. But more often than that, before all of that, your inner credit kicks in where you are suddenly exhausted you are depressed all of it, out of the blue right you get depressed um for me i eat cheetos corn chips organic but still um all those things happen before the crying the screaming the i can't that's for me for you it's going to be totally different when you are in the flow of your heart there is smoothness now those of you who are watching this take a moment and just think about when there has been flow where you have been really into something and life just keeps giving you opportunities for flow even in the middle of an almost year and a half, two year pandemic. You know, we've all experienced flow and it doesn't have to be about really big things. Uh, if you've been um, watching my blogs or listening to other connect ins, I spend most of my summer at the beach because I love paddling on the ocean with dolphins. And that's a real, I'm going to tangent for a minute, but that's a real experience in flow because if I get there and I'm in a guard heart space and I can get through the waves, always something. Uh, if I can get through the waves and I just allow myself, I allow my heart to open. The dolphins come. They'll come right up to me. I haven't touched them, but I could have. Um, and I really do think it's a great barometer of how open my heart is. Now, okay, not all of us can 
have dolphins as our um, heart monitor, <laughs> if you will. But flow, when there is flow and ease and excitement, joy, that not like Wee! joy, but like just really deep happiness flowing through your life, you are in the groove of your heart. When you start to second guess yourself, when you start to doubt everything that you are dreaming of or putting in place, chances are your inner critic and your saboteur is kicking in. And like I said, that's procrastination, self-doubt, um, exhaustion, lethargy, uh, gnashing on, binging on whatever that is. And then there's the realization of a lot of self-doubt. And that is those two points of flow or not flow, like when you're in this world of your mind and you are making something happen and you are doing something to make something happen and you start feeling like you're pushing life up, um, you're pushing a boulder up a hill, that's when you are only in your mind, right? Um, so the barometer of your body is key to knowing whether you're in your head being led by your inner critic or you're in your body and your heart and being led by your soul's path. I'll say that again, just in case you want to get it. When things are hard, when you feel like you're doing when uh, you're pushing things up a hill, right? When life is just hard that way, you are not being led by your heart. You're being led by your mind. When you are in the flow of your heart, there is a sense of allowing, of space, of ease and excitement. And here's the thing that's super important. When you are, translate this, if you will. I'll talk about my experience yesterday. Um, when you are, when I am in a total freak out, and, it, and it's mostly around this online business. I mean, some of you know I had a full-time practice for almost 30 years and I got a calling <laughs> from the universe to move into an uh, online business so that I could touch, so I can share my gifts with other people. I mean, we all have these deep callings, uh, whether they are to talk to your neighbor or to start online programs. Um, but I am also a pretty intense introvert. So for me to be putting myself out there over and over again is, is a growth spurt. Double that, that I'm a Capricorn, which means I will make something happen if I have to. <laughs> so this week, I suddenly, yesterday, starting Monday night, Sunday, Tuesday night, I had a complete and total meltdown. And my inner critic was like, I told you so. You cannot do this. You don't have anything really different or unique to offer the world. I mean, my inner critic went into my inner saboteur, which meant she was taking me down to my knees. And by yesterday afternoon, I was a basket case. I, although I talk to you every week and in other forms, how we learn to navigate the difference between being led by our heart and led by our head. Yesterday, I was in such a muck, I couldn't figure out who was right 
who I was following, really. And yesterday I was like, okay, what if my inner critic is really right? What if I can't do this? I don't have the temperament. I don't have the skill, you know, whatever the hell she was telling me yesterday. I don't have what it takes to, to do this work and all the technology and support that it requires. And I was just about to close down everything. Everything. And a friend of mine came and knocked at my door, which is a really rare occurrence. And I just sat outside and talked with her a little while. And um, yeah, my eyes were leaking. It was a mess. I don't cry often, but oof, when I do, I'm frustrated. You know, I'm crying because I'm frustrated and I'm heartbroken because I believe, I believe deeply that everybody should know how to follow their heart to live their dreams, to live their soul's path. And we only do that when we learn how to navigate the difference between being in our head and in our heart. Because it's that beautiful combination and exchange that gets us going forward. So yesterday I was talking to a friend and I realized I lost, I was in such a kerfuffle <laughs> that I could not figure out whether my inner critic was right or not. And that was more distressing than thinking about um, leaving all of this work and dreams behind. So the question I had yesterday is, what if my inner critic was right? What if there are times when our inner critic is right, when we should throw in the towel and walk away and close everything down or leave a relationship or leave a job or whatever that is? What if our inner critic's right? Like, how do we navigate in the midst of complete chaos, whether it is our heart speaking or our mind speaking. This is super important. Take a moment and just think, see if you can distinguish the difference between when you're being led by your heart and when you are being led by your mind. So here's normally what I recommend is you pause when once you realize you are in a state of confusion, when you are pushing the boulder up the hill, when you are making something happen, when you are pushing and not getting anywhere, when you are not heartful, when you are just not filled with any kind of joy for what you're doing. The first thing you need to do is pause. Pause and breathe. Bring your breath to your belly. Bring your breath all the way down to your feet. Feel your butt if you're sitting and your feet on the ground. Let your breath come all the way down. Right? Energetically, that's the first step of getting out of our head and then down into our body. The second benefit of that is you actually help discharge all of this that's in our head and we get it to come down and to the earth where it's energy, it neutralizes, it's easy, boom. For first, you got to get out of your head and back into your body. Breath, belly, feet. And here's the thing. Sometimes you catch yourself when you're reaching for <laughs> when you're reaching for that bag of corn chips. Oh shit, something's going on. 
or if you, you know, part of understanding that you've slipped back into the mind is to learn signs and symptoms that you, your unique body, tells you. And on my blog, there is a ton of infographics and meditations and stuff to help you navigate whether you're in your head or in your body. Yeah. I also offer programs. In fact, all my programs are how to live a heart-centered life, how to na navigate the head, our inner critic, our self-doubt, and all those things so we can live and be directed by our heart and soul. Every single program has the directionality, if you will. But first step, breath, belly, feet, right? Get yourself out of your head. First step is to recognize. Second step is to recognize all the weird signs and symptoms that your body's going, warning, warning, you are stepping into the rocket of your mind. Your inner critic is taking over whatever that is, right? And it's going to be unique for each and every one of us. Third step, breath, belly, feet. Come back into your body. Most of us live <laughs> from about here up. You know, we're thinking, we're processing, you know, and we don't always notice the warning signs that come from our body, either by emotions or physical sensations, uh, until we are really moving towards crisis. In five element acupuncture, um, all the emotions are signs that something is going awry when it, they become out of balance. <clears throat> Whether that's fear or anger or sadness or <laughs> unable to breathe deeply or lower back pain or frustration, you know, for examples. But to first recognize how your body is giving you warning signs, right? Then to breath, belly, feet. And then, then you can start following your heart's yes, as I like to call it. <clears throat> now, as I talked about yesterday, I was in such a state, I couldn't trust my heart's yes, which was, it was an intense experience. I mean, for me to follow my heart's yes, and I hope at one point for you as well, that is the barometer that keeps us on path. <clears throat> on a path of deep happiness, on a path of our soul's truth. And if we don't have that barometer, if we don't have that support, it can get rocky, you know? And so how do we know if our inner critic is really true? First, we have to get out of this kerfuffle, right? Recognize what's going on in our body. Breath, belly, feet. Then place your hands on your heart. Right? Say something that is true for you. Like, my name is Demini. And notice how your body responds to that. Do you feel flow or do you feel resistance? And then go ahead and say, my name is, and use somebody else's name. Notice how your body responds. Our body guides us to being the best, our body and heart guide us to being the highest, best, brightest expression of ourselves. And that is when we are led that way by following the cues of our heart, of our body, by this sensation of flow and yes and excitement and ease. But life is not all unicorns and fairy tales. Sometimes things blindside you. Sometimes when you are at the precipice of change, when you are standing at that cliff and going, yes, 
yes, I can. And then you go, oh, no, I can't, right? That's our mind kicking in and saying, mm, I don't know if you should make that jump. I don't know. The only way that you know some, if, that something is right for you is to connect in to your body and into your heart. Because that is how we navigate life. So the question is, is the inner critic ever right? <clears throat> I don't think so. What is always right and true is our heart. Our inner critic kicked in these limitations to keep us safe when we were young. And as evolved, reflective, spiritual beings, we grow. We grow into the brightest, best expression of ourselves. And that directionality, that growth pattern, is guided by our heart and our soul. And so very simply, when there is resistance or a sense of working way too hard for something, that is your mind. When you get stuck, stopped, taken down to your knees, pause, breath, belly, feet, reflect. And then ask your heart, ask your full body, heart's yes. Is this the right path for me or not? And feel for that heart's yes. That's how we connect in. That is how we live a life filled with deep happiness, by following our heart's yes. So there are, again, check out my blog. Definitely check out my programs because there is something for you, whether you are beginning on this path or you have been on this path for a long time and everything in between. I offer programs to help guide you to living the highest, most authentic expression of yourself. So check it out. In the meanwhile, breath, belly, feet. Follow your heart's yes and recognize when your mind is going. All right, see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.